I had an event in Nina, Wisconsin, north of, north of Milwaukee. I flew from Minneapolis, went to Milwaukee, rented a car uh, to drive north to Nina. And I remember being in a, a, a beige Ford Taurus rental car from National. Pick any car, and I picked a beige Ford Taurus. <laughs> and I'm suddenly surrounded by thousands upon thousands on thousands of hardcore Harley tattooed riders. I have never been on a Harley. I've never dreamed of owning a Harley. I've never thought of myself as a Harley kind of a guy. But that day in my beige Ford rental car, <laughs> I wanted a Harley. You'd see all these people standing by their bikes and, you know, and somebody'd walk by and go, oh man, Nice bike. And there's this instant connection. And one of the old adages that's so strong is that people want to do business with people they like, people they trust, people they have a strong relationship with. Well, how do we create that relationship other than truly connecting with them? And how do we connect with others in a meaningful way? I really believe that connections are everything. 50 of the top cardiac surgeons from across the country based upon their own selection process. <laughs> They get together around the country and the world, and they sit and they talk about cutting edge research of what they're doing, they, and they give PowerPoint presentations. And just as today, I sat in that meeting from 8 a.m. on, and I took out my notebook, the next notebook that they had, I was taking notes, writing down words I understood, words like, the. <laughs> but what impressed me beyond their brilliance as some of the brightest men and women in this field was their compassion. Because confidence without compassion is arrogance. Confidence with compassion is a connection. Within any presentation, stories are good, but the application is even more important. You know, my presentations, you won't see a lot of PowerPoint. Matter of fact, you won't see any at all. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I want to create an experience. Ladies and gentlemen, like a game show, please welcome up to this stage right now, the amazing Oscar. Oscar. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your colleague to the stage, Melinda. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome up to the stage, fellow consultant, Katrina. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ken up on the stage. I know you're with payroll, but like what, what company are you with? Service wire company. Service wire company? Yeah. We manufacture wire, like the wire that's in the um, the light rail, we made that wire. I've been wondering who made that wire. That's a... <laughs> and Oscar, you have a Harley. Yes. What model is it? It's a sported uh, 1996. Electroglide. 2008 Road King. But Ivory Soap fans do not tattoo the words Ivory Soap on their bodies. <laughs> Harley people, I've seen you. You tattoo the words Harley Davidson on your bodies. Yes. <laughs> it's true. How'd you know? <laughs> I wasn't looking for full disclosure, but thank you for it. One of the challenges companies have, differentiation. How do we provide a service that's better than anybody else? How do we provide a product that's better than anybody else? If you want to look at a real challenge, uh, try selling a commodity that's exactly the same as your competitor at a higher price. 2.8 billion dollars in sales. That's a lot of boxes. Here's the cool part. Their boxes cost more than their competitors' boxes. Okay, perhaps I was a bit more enamored with that fact than you are here <laughs> at NSN Washington, D.C. Let's review. It's a box! <laughs> it doesn't sing, it doesn't dance, it doesn't have differentiation. Doesn't help you lose weight, have better sex. Has no Facebook friends. Nobody tweets about it except for a handful of you in the room right now. <laughs> it's a box. Can you see their national sales manager at a Marriott Ballroom in front of their team? Okay, people, uh, here's this year's model.
you're kind of familiar with her. Uh, we've had some price increases. Jeez, pulp has gone up a lot. So go out there and sell a whole bunch and win a trip to Cancun. I'm not the smartest guy in the room. I'm comfortable in my own skin. But I know how to ask one question. How do you do that? <laughs> well, I asked their national sales manager that question. And he said, Mark, if there was a silver bullet, all of our competitors would be doing it. We have three core values. I want my stories to be unpredictable. I want my stories to have a hook, meaning people remember it a week, a year later. I want my stories to have a cast of characters. From my comedy background in a comedy group, I bring the stage alive with just a wide array of different characters that step in and step out to support the stories. In order to be successful in business, you need three things. My name's R.J. Jones. I'm doing great. You know why? I don't like you. I thought it through. <laughs> it's 91 miles. Fort Smith, Arkansas. It's up to you how long it's gonna take. <laughs> That's my chair, get the heck out of my chair for crying out loud. Chris the fish several times, it doesn't enhance the flavor, but the fish just loves it. That's Old Spice. <laughs> I'm wearing it right now. Old Spice and Cavassier, how you doing? When you stop singing, that's when you start dying. And I ain't quite ready to start dying just yet. Barbara Jordan said, it's more important to be interested than interesting. Everybody has a story. When you know your people's stories, they'll be with you forever, but you must be present to win. I think to acknowledge others and connect with others fully in an authentic manner, that's what Nice Bike is all about. My dad was a, a World War II vet, part of the greatest generation. A blue collar, black lunch bucket, drove a Ford, proud of it. And I wouldn't say real emotional. I mean, not a real warm, fuzzy kind of a guy. But we took a trip once out to Washington, D.C., as I'm an adult and dad's in his later years, and we visited the Vietnam Memorial. My dad and I are walking the wall of the two Vietnam vets standing right there, and my father, totally out of character, said, Mark, hang on a second. Excuse me, fellas. Where are you over there? Vietnam. Ah, uh, yeah, there we were. Thank you, fellas. Welcome home. And that guy looked at my dad and said, sir, you are the very first person who has ever said thank you to me for serving the country that I love. That means a lot, man. He stepped over and gave my dad a hug. My dad's not really a hugger. <laughs> But that, that, night, uh, that night, my father hugged. And I saw tears in my father's eyes and tears in the Vietnam vet's eyes. And as a son, that was the first time and the last time I ever saw that in my father's eyes. And it really hit me how powerful the words thank you can be. I didn't know it at the time, but my dad taught me the ultimate nice bike. Instead of walking by these guys, he acknowledged them. He was present. He honored them by creating a remarkable experience. He connected with them by making it personal. We need to celebrate you. So to wrap up this afternoon, this will just take a moment. I do have an activity. I, I'm gonna divide you in half. This is one side over here. That's the other side over there. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome guest conductor. Mark Sharonbrock.
stitches. I did weep a little bit in there. The way that he'll make you laugh. <laughs> Motivating, amazing. Yeah, I did not feel like I was just being talked to. I felt like I was a part of it. Even 10 years from now, I remember the stories. Totally fun. Nice bike. Yeah, definitely nice bike. You just walk away feeling completely mesmerized. I'm going to remember some of the things he said probably the rest of my life. You know, I just thought it was fabulous, fabulous. Nice bike. Nice bike. Nice